Welcome to launch day, everyone. Very exciting day when a brand new product from UltraView comes out. We have all new UltraView stabilizers. These are the UV target stabilizers. It's been a project we've been working on for quite some time from the ground up. And I will say there are a lot of companies coming out with stabilizers, carbon stabilizers that are essentially all of the same. And we've done, I've done stabilizer videos in the past kind of talking about it too, where it's like, you know, it's just the same carbon tube. Like there's nothing different about it. And we knew that. And that's why we did all of our homework from the ground up. And these are a one of one stabilizer. So I'm super pumped. The whole team is super pumped about them. We have some super cool technology in it too. Um, so let's dive right in open these bad boys up. The first thing that's very obvious is the packaging. Very unique pa packaging. Colby was like, you know what? We wanna make a package like no one has done before. So bada bing, bada boom, there we go. This is our 30 inch target rod. Let's see it. There we go. Pull this out, set it on the table, close this bad boy up, and then put that on the ground. We have a 15 inch rod. So starting out, we do only have 15 and 30 inch bars, which are the most popular bars for the target world. And pretty much you can, you can any, anyone, any draw length, any size can make these bars work. So initials, impressions, and what we really were looking for was a dark, matte, mean looking stabilizer, very subtle. Um, we didn't want it to look gaudy or anything. So everything about this is super matte and clean. The stabilizers are made of a high modulus carbon, which means they are very, very stiff. And the things we were trying to achieve out of the stabilizer was super thin. So these are half inch stabilizers, super stiff and also super light. And we've achieved that. It, I believe it's 13% stiffer than other stabilizers in this same class of half inch stabilizers. So we were really able to achieve um, some pretty cool things. Technology wise, I guess, our end cap, the front end cap that these stabilizer weights go on is already two, in, two, two inches, wow, two ounces. So you're already are starting out with two ounces. The bar itself is like stupid light. I don't know, Colby keeps stressing us like, guys, you don't realize like how light this bar is. So super stiff, super light, which is key to getting weight as far from the bow as possible. There's a lot of stabilizers out there that the whole bar is heavy. And I mean, that's fine. It creates a super stiff bar, but to have maximum accuracy, especially in a target rig, it's having a super stiff light bar getting weight as far out as possible meaning there's not a bunch of weight throughout the bar. All of the weight is at the end of the stabilizer. Um, over here on the part that actually mounts to the bow, we have this inner core thingamajigger that the engineers were super smart about that makes this bar super stiff. It's like this inner core and we epoxy it in. It's not just a cup around the outside. It's actually like this plug that goes all the way in. So that's super cool. Um, and then obviously the same for the 30 inch rod. So I'm jazzed up about these and what I'm more jazzed up about too is our new weight systems. I guess everything is new because we never come out with it, but we are calling these, what are we calling these? Ultra lock? I believe that's what it is. Ultra lock weights. And I believe they are patent pending because of the way that these work. So we have this uh, extra big weight. This is a four ouncer and every single weight has its own set of threads. So the one, the biggest pain point that I've always had with stabilizers is you're dealing with these like long threads and you continually have to stack them and you'd have to like fit them in between. And like you end up, if you run it on a bunch of weight, you have like two or three of these little stubs. So every single one of these weights has a thread, has a bolt and then threads on the other side. So all you have to do is thread these in, lock them down. And then this is a one ounce. So you can just stack these, I mean, to infinity, which is really, really convenient. It's really fast. You no longer, you know, if you take a weight off, you no longer have to then figure out what to do with this giant end bolt piece. It's just every single weight is flush and clean looking. And I will say we have a new process of coating these in black that is like incredibly durable. No more chipping, no more scratching. Incredibly, incredibly durable. So UV stabilizers, uh, new weight system is very, very dope. <clears throat> and of course we have them in one ounces, we have them in four ounces. So if you really wanna stack it, your weight up, you can. Um, I will say, and what I've experienced with testing these is you actually feel like 
you can run less weight because of the bar is so light that you're getting that mass weight farther out so it's more reactive and actually does its job better. In this box, we have an all new, again, it is all new because this is our first one, we have a side bar bracket um, with also some new cool technology in it. So it's gonna come shipped, all stored away like that. And there is two adjustments down here. And then it goes into the bow like this. You have full range of adjustment there with markers, full range of adjustments there. And what's really nice is that the quick disconnect is a T handle. So it's going to slip right in perfectly and lock down with like a T force to it. So kind of cool, kind of unique. Um, so I think what is best is that we slap these bad boys on my bow and I kind of like tune them per se and kind of see where I end up with my weight and kind of go through that process how I would do it. So we have my TRX 36 here. This is my 3D bow set to like 65, 64 pounds, something like that. I will say we at the moment do not have quick disconnects out the front, but I really love an eight degree quick disconnect. So I have the Matthews quick disconnect still on. Um, they will work uh, with these bars. So let's see here. I need, I need one of these deals. Slap that bad boy in. And um, what I'm going to do, and this is what I suggest many people do when putting stabilizers on for the first time or a new set or a new setup, is you start with as little weight as possible and then you work up from there. You don't want to like stack a bunch of weight on right at the beginning. So I already have two ounces on there because of the stock end cap. What I'm going to do is just put one more on and then, oh, I guess we got to install this bad boy. So let's do that real quick. Where did that bolt go that was with this? There it is. Um, so with this, we also have two holes depending on where you want it. So if you want a little bit further out or if you want it all the way in snug, I believe I'm going to want it all the way in snug, um, but we'll see. I always like to run it flat right there and it kind of sits against the riser a little bit. You always want to really ream on this. There's a lot of leverage always on it, so you want to make sure that's good and tight. And let's see here, we'll just kind of eyeball this. And again, it's this part is very fine tuned and, and more of a feel. There's no mathematical process to this part, how you want your bars to actually be positioned. So I'm just going to kind of guess and run it like that first and really clamp these down just because there's a lot of, a lot of force on them. Okay. And then we'll, oh, wrong way. Lefty loosey, ready tighty. I'll just kind of eyeball this one too. And I like running it in this lower spot on a Matthews, um, a Matthews especially. I've kind of always been a fan of running on the lower one. I like to keep my center of gravity as low as possible. I don't know if that's just a me thing, but I think it feels, feels the best like that. So we're going to pop this weight off too. Again, super short threads, but also super secure and every weight has its own threads. I can't stress enough how much I love that. So we're just going to put one on. We got our little T handle guy here. Bada bing, bada boom. And initial impressions when we had these final versions is they just look sexy with the black all the way through matte black. And that's definitely the look we were going for. Um, always a good test, especially with these back bars is you don't, I, I never like them hitting me. So I always make sure that they're kicked out enough. And then really from there, you just fine tune with weight. You can fine tune with position a little bit, but you can achieve a lot just by adding or removing weight. So that's pretty much what I got here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go out to 50 meters, get a target hung up and just shoot uh, quite a bit and just kind of play with the weights. And I'll just kind of describe how they feel and kind of how I maybe fine tune some weight. We'll do 60 yards. I think this is gonna be about the same as my ASA arrows. Well, at least hit the target. This is first of all, I'm just gonna see where I hit. So you look pretty decent. Okay, just a little low.
money. Okay. So, like, I don't know. It's actually not feeling that bad with only one and one. <clears throat> but what you're trying to achieve and, and what stabilizers and what we have talked about before. Oh, also, I'm going to put these sunglasses on. These are uh, Leupold's new DeSoto glasses. They are now live. A little more rugged. They don't fall off your head. Um, but they have that big, big glass frame. I really like the big glass frame and stuff. The stabilizers, what they do is they enhance your shot. They make you more stable, but they don't fix anything. They don't, f they don't make you shoot better. They just enhance what you already got going on sort of thing. So especially in a target stabilizer, what you are looking for in a target stabilizer, or any target stabilizer, even if you don't want these, what you want is a very stiff, light rod. And if it's not stiff and if it's not light, it's actually going to hurt you. It's gonna be less forgiving. And what a stiff rod does is it makes your shot more forgiving. Essentially, it makes the arrow leave the bow without the stabilizer or anything interfering with the shot. And then with a super light bar, what it does is get that weight out as far as possible. You can, you can think of the analogy, like even if you pop this off and you hold this with two fingers and you try to shake it back and forth, like you can feel so much more weight and it's harder to move than if you took like a broomstick and you held a broomstick and it's just mass all the way through, like it would feel so different. That might have been a bad analogy, but I think you're catching my drift. So I'm just gonna shoot at this a couple more times. <clears throat> and what setting up your stabilizers are is it's 100% feel, and I've gone before, like you can do the ratio thing um, to where it averages about, like if you put one in the front, you're gonna wanna put two in the back. Put two in the front, you probably want three or four in the back. But as you get longer rods, you need less weight because there's more leverage. So I'm running a 15 inch in the back. I've kind of always ran a 12, but I have a 15, so I'm definitely gonna run a little bit less in the back. I might even kick it out a little bit more just to have more of the same feeling <clears throat> as, you know, more weight would do. But we're just gonna shoot a couple and see what's up. And I know someone's gonna ask, because they typically do, like, how do you shoot in sunglasses? Um, it all has everything to do with face position. If you can't, you can't shoot through sunglasses. Some people, you know, everyone's built a little bit different, so some people you just can't. Um, but if you can't and the bridge is in the way, just try, you know, straightening your head out and being more in line. Sometimes if you're like leaning weird or looking across your face too much, you, you know, are gonna run into issues. It's a little windy. Running a half inch rod in the wind too helps a bunch. Just helps cut down all the, the drag. We probably got a good 10 mile an hour wind right now. More key characteristics of a good target stabilizer. Um, obviously stiff, light, and a lot of times when it's super stiff and super light, you get a little bit more buzz, a little bit more vibration out of it. But that doesn't affect accuracy whatsoever. It might affect sound, it might affect feel a little bit <clears throat> but it's actually what you look for in a hunting stabilizer isn't necessarily what you look for in a target stabilizer because they you know in a hunting stabilizer you want them to like kind of dampen while you want them to feel good target you really don't care how it feels you care about how it performs i um, mean that's just like a good rod all around in general good stiff lightweight rod Man, how it is right now actually doesn't feel too bad. We'll, st we'll stack a couple more on and just see how it feels though. <clears throat> as your bow gets heavier, as just more weight gets put on, your movements become slower, but it all depends on your conditioning and like how you get used to it. So if you are like unconditioned in shooting, like you're weaker per se, you really need less weight. Like you don't need a lot of weight to settle yourself down, but as you get stronger, as you shoot more and you're in good shooting shape, you can add a little bit more on because you're gonna be you know, stronger, more reactive to that weight. So it all really depends. What I'm saying is this, I'm not in shooting shape, so I don't need like 12 ounces on each side. Let's run down there and check those out. I'll grab a couple more weights. Oh, that's nice, look at that. Look at that. It sits all by itself. So we're a little low. We're gonna try to dial that in and uh, maybe hang a target. Wow, that's tough. Oh, there's a rabbit. Wow, that was chilling right underneath that target. 
I shoot at the red. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put two on the back. And one more on the front. I'll just see how that feels. It's all about feel. You wanna do gradual, gradual increments, nothing crazy. Okay. And it's feeling pretty good. I kind of like this. As you, as you obviously add more weight to your sidebar, you're gonna feel more of a bias on that side. So if it becomes too much of a bias, but you still want a little bit of weight, obviously you just swing it in a little bit and that's gonna help essentially even out the leverage, but the side to side leverage, but you still got the forward backward leverage. And again, um, I talked about this pretty in depth in a, I think a video I made last year, but a lot of misconceptions about sidebars. Sidebars, um, partially one thing that they do is they offset the sight and on a hunting bow, they offset the, the um, quiver a little bit. But the biggest thing they do, especially in target archery, is they create bias so that you always are essentially not fighting against, but you're setting in to the right spot. Because let's be honest, some of these target setups where they have like 30 ounces out the side, that bow is not balanced. It has an extreme amount of bias to one side. And when they shoot, they are essentially holding against that weight to become steadier. Um, you know, if you were to perfectly balance your bow, there's the argument that perfectly balanced things can become unbalanced very easily. So if you're at this neutral state, you can just poke it and it goes all sorts which way. So if you have a little bit of bias, and you're making your bow level and just, you know, fighting against it a little bit. Not a ton, we're just talking a little bit and everyone varies. You know, you arguably are more, more steady and more accurate that way. So a lot of interesting things about stabilizers. And again, at the end of the day, they do not make you a better shooter. They just enhance the better shooter in you. Wow. We should put that on a t-shirt. You're like a philosopher philosophy, chemistry, geometry. I think this is a good time to end this video. <laughs> nah, we gotta go see the sick group I shot down there. I'm gonna put this back, bow, bow stand included. Okay, so ignore these. So shooting at that, still getting sighted in. These last couple were really solid, good shots from 60 yards. So, obviously it's not a contest of any sorts but i kind of like where it's at right now i got um four three three in the back one in the front two in the front three in the back two in the front and but you got to remember that these stabilizers have two ounces already built into the front so plus two to whatever you're thinking of the bar itself um so make sure to check it out ultra view <coughs> wow it is springtime uv stabilizers now available on ultraviewarchery.com. Make sure to check it out. See you, bye.